on the Bay Area's local news station. We begin now with breaking news. Breaking news is Sunday night at 10 o'clock here on Cron 4 News at 10. All stay at home orders set to be lifted across California on Monday. Thanks for joining us here at 10 o'clock. I'm Jonathan McCall. And I'm Justine Waldman. We want to get right to our Ashley Zavala. She's our Capitol Brew reporter. She broke this story earlier on Twitter. She got it basically confirmed that the governor plans to release the state from the stay at home order. She's joining us now live on the phone from Sacramento. Ashley, what do you know? Hey, Justine. Hey, Jonathan. Yeah, so what I know right now is forces inside the Capitol. Governor Newsom tomorrow is expected to announce that stay-at-home orders for all regions of California, Bay Area, California, San Joaquin Valley, will all out of stay-at-home order. Most counties are expected to go back to purple tier. All counties are actually supposed to go back into the, into the tier system, I should say. Uh, but that will be purple for most of us. Uh, that will allow the reopening of outdoor dining, indoor salons, indoor personal care salons like nail services, barbershop hair tattoos, hair, hair salons, and tattoo parlors. Ashley, is it too early to say um, will the, when the states go back to the purple tier or that tier system, will they have to then do once again what they were having to do an earlier on? meeting certain criteria and certain goals in order to move up, uh, to move ahead into the next tier? You know, that's a good question, Jonathan, and something that we've been wondering uh, really this whole time as they develop this framework for the stay-at-home order. I know the California Department of Public Health has been saying that they're developing framework for re-entry into the tier system and how that works, uh, but we really haven't gotten any clarity on what happens when everyone is out of the stay-at-home order and moves through the tier system? Does anything change? So we are uh, waiting for that information. I do, apparently, what my sources are telling me is that this decision that's coming tomorrow is based off of the ICU projections statewide for the next four weeks. But as you know, these projections are not publicly available. Well, yeah, we kind of jumped around this weekend. Friday was at 6% for the Bay Area region. Then we went to about 24% yesterday and today. So there was a huge jump after a lag in reporting. So it seems that they're looking at it now that our ICU projections are going to stay above 15% capacity. So that's why we're able to enter out of the stay-at-home order. Is that what you understand? So... As, as we tried to even confirm that this announcement was happening, I will say we should give a shout out to our sister stations. Some, you know, uh, Ashley Jacobs in Fox 5 earlier today was reporting that she heard that this was going to be lifted in Southern California. Uh, KPXL in Sacramento actually heard from the Department of Health saying that we are seeing promising signs. This is from the California Department of Public Health. We're seeing promising signs that California is slowly emerging from the intense Stage of this pandemic. We continue to look at what that means for the regional stay-at-home order and we'll provide an update tomorrow. So we do know, one, that California's Department of Public Health sees promising signs, and two, that we are definitely getting an update tomorrow. And the details of how this decision was made, again, that's what we're still waiting on. And it was the California Restaurant Association that sort of triggered all this today. They sent out a, a letter to its members saying that late this evening, a senior official in the Newsom administration informed us that the governor will announce tomorrow, meaning Monday, that the stay-at-home order will be lifted in all regions of the state. So that's sort of where this all started to develop from. And so can you tell us, Ashley, so we're going back to the purple tier. We're not exactly sure when, because most Bay Area counties, when we left the tier system and then went to the ICU capacity system, we were mostly in the purple tier system. So do you remember exactly like what that means will be open and closed? As I recall, it is uh, indoor hair salons and outdoor dining. That will be able to resume. Yeah, so outdoor fitness, outdoor dining, to all of the emphasis on outdoor everything, essentially, except for personal care services like hair salons, barbershops, nail salons, tattoo parlors, for example. Ashley, are, are there concerns right now? We know that, yes, officials are saying that uh, things appear to be promising, but right now we are still in the grips of this pandemic. We are, st we are still seeing a number of cases. Are there concerns? Are you hearing from folks who are saying this may not necessarily be the best time for the governor to make a move like this right now? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of that. And even in my, you know, Twitter mentions and we get this platform to interact with the public, a number of people are saying that they're very concerned about this, especially with how California's vaccine rollout is going. Um, as California ranks near the bottom in distributing its lot of vaccines, and uh, that's giving people some pause here. At the, on the other side of the page of this, I'm hearing from, you know, a lot of business owners, uh, I'm sure the restaurant association that they received that letter is probably excited that they can reopen for business. And then another angle on this is that um, some of Newsom's critics will say that he is succumbing to a recall effort that has been gaining momentum um, really since the end of last year, start of this year, uh, just over how this pandemic has played out here in the state. I'm also hearing now from some sources that San Francisco's mayor is going to be holding a press briefing tomorrow, and it's expected that she will address that San Francisco is going to be reopening and also confirming this information that you've been reporting that will go back to following the state's colored coded system and that they're hopeful that outdoor dining will then happen later on this week. So it's not necessarily that things might change officially tomorrow on Monday, but maybe that's just when the governor is going to be making this announcement. Yeah, and the governor has, has, done, has been given uh, the local cities and counties the power to do that. Of course, if California, the state, lifts a restriction, he would not or he has said in the past that he would not hold a city or county back from leaving their own stricter restrictions in place. So, yeah, and, and we don't really know a timeline. He could announce this tomorrow and say this goes into effect in a couple of days. But we saw with the greater Sacramento region a couple of weeks ago, mm. that announcement was very sudden. Yeah, that was a little mm. controversial. And a lot of folks were talking about that. And Ashley, do you, just from someone who covers... Uh, the Capitol, someone who covers the governor, we know for a fact that they have not publicly disclosed uh, how they reached these four-week projections. Uh, do you think the governor has to, or someone from the state, even if it's uh, Dr. Galley, someone from the administration has to come to the public now and explain how they're able to reach these projections uh, because of the confusion that we have seen over the last few weeks where we are hearing one message and now we're understanding that they're getting ready to reopen where just as we were saying a few days ago, uh, this the Bay Area region under 6%, we needed that 15% to meet that threshold to move out. Do you think it's time for the administration to come forward, to come clean with how exactly they're doing this? Jonathan, absolutely. And have been, I have pressing CDP, the governor's office, uh, even the and they decision stop updating daily IC numbers. And while we understand that perhaps their decision makes an entire self of that number, the number was holding them accountable in some way, giving the people some sort of evidence behind the decisions that they're making. But once they take that away and they're not updating it regularly, how can business owners, the public who is, I mean, fatigued, tired, exhausted from this pandemic, the opening and the closing and the reopening and the reclosing, um, the public deserves to know. Yeah, I'm already getting a lot of uh, texts and emails from uh, friends and community members I know that have businesses that have been impacted by these closures. So they're anxiously awaiting to know exactly what the governor is expected to say tomorrow and when the stay-at-home order will be officially lifted. Ashley Zavala, thank you so much for joining us here on Cron4 News tonight at 10 o'clock and for breaking the story for us. Thanks so much, you guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow because we do have continuing coverage right now on what this all means. That's right. Cron 4 is Dan Thorne live tonight in San Francisco, breaking down with what the medical experts now saying about it. Dan. Well, Jonathan and Justine, what a big change that we've had over in the last 48 hours, right? We were talking about the ICU capacity here in the Bay Area increasing, and then there was this debate about whether or not we should be doing what Sacramento has been doing and how come they've been able to have their shelter in place orders lifted. And then we were really concerned uh, about whether or not we were going to have our orders lifted here to allow for outdoor dining and to allow for um, uh, people to go get their hair cut or to go to a barber shop or anything like that. So 
there has been some um, sort of debates about what's been happening here, you know, so this news is, is brand new. So obviously we're taking it in right now and, and hoping uh, to figure out more about what the governor is planning on saying uh, tomorrow in terms of all of this. But this is something that we've been hearing from health professionals. We heard today from a UCSF infectious disease specialist that were saying that they believe that shelter in place orders were going to be lifted uh, in terms of that statewide. We weren't sure on that. We were mainly focused here in the Bay Area, but our numbers have been trending in the right direction. So it's been uh, leading to the way that we would want it to go, that we would uh, appear to be uh, coming over and, and doing better against the uh, the COVID-19 uh, right now. But there has also been concerns out there about the uh, variants, also uh, concerns about the vaccination rollout. So uh, there's a couple of things that still have to be considered in terms of moving forward in all of this, but this is definitely a positive sign and great news for people that are looking to uh, sort of normalize their situation, right? Being able to allow people to come back to their restaurants, allowing people to come back into their hair salons and barber shops. It allows for our uh, economy to sort uh, sort of start moving again in the right direction. But um, both our, our local leaders and also our health leaders would say that the one thing they do not want people doing is getting complacent, right? You want to continue to do social distancing. You want to make sure that you are physically distancing from people, still limiting on uh, in terms of your travel, making sure that you're only doing that for um, things that are essential. Um, also making sure that you're continuing to wear your mask because that has proven to be uh, a pretty good case um, or a pretty good thing to do to keep cases down. Uh, another thing that did not materialize and we'd been here hearing from health experts uh, that after Christmas and then after New Year's, we were going to be getting this surge upon a surge upon a surge. And it appears that the shelter in place orders or at least uh, were working or at least people were following them. And that is what has got us essentially to this point. So uh, there has been questions about uh, clarity and transparency in terms of the numbers. As you heard Ashley mentioned before, uh, health officials have come out and said our, our state health officials have come out and said that they sort of look at these common complex models and complex numbers in order to determine uh, projections that will eventually get us to being, you know, where or whether we're going to get back to a tiered system or we're going to be opening back up or we're going to be heading in, in a direction that would be you know, positive. Uh, so there, there are still questions about whether or not that's that's going to continue to go the way that it goes. Uh, but um, certainly a sigh of relief for people that are out there that are looking to get back to um, seeing things open back up again, but I'm sure for the vulnerable populations that are out there, there's still probably con some concerns because we have gone through this uh, closing and opening and closing and opening. So there's been some uh, inconsistencies in terms of the messaging with how we are responding to COVID-19. Uh, but I guess we'll see what the governor and uh, our state health officials say tomorrow. Thank you so much, Dan Thorne, for that report. And it's so true to reiterate that whatever we've been doing apparently has been working. working. If our ICU bed capacity is doing much better and the governor now believes that we can exit the stay-at-home order, it's no time to get complacent. Wearing masks, washing hands, staying apart, staying home, all those things have been working to get us back to this point. And just because they're going to open things back up again doesn't mean we can just let our guard down. It'll be interesting to see what the governor has to say tomorrow, um, along with the rest of the state leaders, uh, local leaders as well. I think a lot of folks definitely have been looking forward to this. I think a lot of folks definitely want to take a cautious approach. We want to get things back open, but we don't want to do it at the sake of having to go back to revert where we've been the last few weeks. So it will be very interesting to see what the governor has to say tomorrow. We will make sure to carry uh, the governor's message for you here on Cron On and uh, Cron4.com. Another big thing that we are watching right now is the wild wet weather that's on our way this week. Winter is returning in a big way. That's right. We're tracking some rain as well as snow in the Sierras. Cron4 meteorologist Marisa Rodriguez here with a look at the totals expected to fall. Yeah, and they're going to be major totals. We're only 20 to 30 percent of average as far as rainfall for this wet season. So it's almost like a double edged sword. This atmospheric river is certainly going to help us with our current drought situation. But at what cost? We're tracking possible mud and debris flows because we're expected to see inches of rain making its way into the Bay Area starting Tuesday night through Thursday night. So we could see at least two and a half inches of rain for most of 
of us here in the Bay Area, and upwards of four and a half inches of rain could be expected, especially isolated valley areas, specifically those of you in the North Bay. Hills and mountains six to eight inches and the Santa Lucia Mountains just to our south. We could see upwards of more than a foot of rain, 13 inches expected. So let's track this atmospheric river hour by hour and day by day. Monday and Tuesday are going to be fairly dry days. For those of you in the North Bay, you could start to see some showers early in the evening by Tuesday, widespread rain by Tuesday night, and that's when it's really going to peak during the overnight hours. We could see torrential pouring and the heaviest rain rates first arriving for those of you in the North Bay by around four o'clock in the morning. And then for the rest of the Bay Area, we're expected to see the highest rain rates by around sunrise at 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. And we're still tracking widespread rain, so we're not going to get a break from this wet weather. Widespread light to moderate rain will continue Wednesday night, even into your Thursday morning. The storm will start to exit and break apart by Thursday night. And now our Friday is looking to be a fairly dry day, but we do have the threat of mud and debris flows, especially from our recent burn scar areas. We could see already an inch and a half of rain from Tuesday night through Wednesday morning and then upwards of two to three and even four inches of rain for most Bay Area cities by Thursday night when it is all said and done. And that is why the National Weather Service in the Bay Area already planning ahead and issuing a flash flood watch because of all of those concerns I just mentioned starting Tuesday afternoon. So flooding, ponding, if you don't need to be on the roads, please stay away, stay home and make sure that you plan ahead because we are expecting severe weather and gusty winds as well with down trees and power outages. All right, you've been warned, and so, but we'll be tracking all of it right here at Cron 4. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for We'll be right back.